Thank you for watching an Insider Report. I'm Gabby Sanzo with Danny Parker at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, where Tennessee just won 42 to 41 over Georgia Tech in the season opener. A huge game, huge game for Tennessee, and this is exactly what Tennessee fans wanted to see out of the first, out of the season opener game. Coming from last year to this year, Tennessee had a bunch of players leave, and it, this was a big opportunity to see some of the guys that would step up in places where they needed to step up. And tonight, I think Tennessee found a lot of guys who were able to fill in the spots. Um, starting on offense, John Kelly, obviously, huge game for him. I, I believe it was 125 yards, three touchdowns. Danny, what, are you, what did you see out of his performance? I mean, we knew coming in that he was a leader, but you know, what did you see tonight that just, you know, what, the biggest thing that you saw out of him? Yeah, Tennessee fans got a taste of John Kelly last December uh, in the Music City Bowl against Nebraska. Just He's just such a hard kid to bring down. He just I know he just seems just so angry every time he touches the football, and he's he's relentless. Uh, he's just, you know, dynamite comes in small packages, they say, and I, that's, that's John Kelly. He's just, just a hard-nosed kid, the type of teammate you want. Uh, we saw him as one of the, the game day captains for the volunteers today against Georgia Tech, and that, that makes sense. I knew that he would probably be captain at some point this year for one of these games. He just – He's the guy you want, you know, the football in his hands when you got to have a two-point conversion late or a, a fourth and short, and it's it's he's a guy that helped answer some questions for Tennessee tonight. And on terms on terms of um, offense, while we're on the subject, Marquez Callaway. <laughs> I mean, we've seen big plays from him as well, but tonight he really stepped up in a moment of need when Juwan Jennings left the game early. What did you see from him? Yeah, Jennings going out. That, that was a sudden change moment for the Vols. Already, Josh Malone was going on to the NFL, the Cincinnati Bengals, and. You know, all the talk all offseason was Juwan Jennings being that number one receiver and finally getting his chance, and boom, he's out at halftime. Uh, Marquez said it was something in his wrist, something like that. It said it looked a little limp. Um, I saw him in the tunnel after the game. He was going to get checked, and but didn't return in the second half. So somebody had to step up, make plays. The offense was sputtering. The st statistics weren't pretty at all. People were wondering, are we going to see Jared Garantano? And then, boom, uh, Marquez Colley steps up, makes some plays down the field, made a play in the corner of the end zone right in front of me, uh, did what he needed to do. I think he's earned some reps. Um, I talked about him a lot in 2016 training camp. I thought he was the best out of that freshman group of wide receivers, which included Tyler Bird. Um, so I, I gave him lofty status. We didn't see him until about game eight or nine last year in Columbia, South Carolina. Kind of a burnt year. I only got one catch on the entire season, but, you know, really springboarded into, into the season. Had a good spring, had a good camp, made the most of his opportunity against Georgia Tech. And to flip to the other side of the ball, one of the positions going into this game that people, you know, had big question marks about was the linebackers unit. Uh, tonight, Daniel Batuli really, really stepped up as well. 23 tackles, I believe. You know, what did you see from that? Yeah, tip of the hat to Gabby Santa for breaking the Austin Smith news. Not available tonight. You know, he would have been the starting Sam linebacker instead. Daniel Batuli's in. You know, a pregame sudden change type moment, if you will. Uh, so Daniel comes in. He's a guy that was a four-star prospect coming out of high school in Nashville. I saw him compete for a state championship, and he, kind of that big, strong guy, about 245 pounds or so. So this this type of game was exactly the type of scenario where you want for that rugged top linebacker like Daniel Batuli is. Uh, we'll see how, much, how many reps he gets later in the in the year when they go to a 4-2-5 alignment. But if anybody really earned more reps on the defensive side of the football tonight, it was Daniel Batuli. 23 tackles, 10 solo, a forced fumble. Uh, he's got a great chance to be SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Another player on the defensive side of the ball that made a huge impact tonight was Rashawn Galden. I know he had a forced fumble and a lot of other things, but that forced fumble was the, the thing that stood out the most to me. Um, you know, just talk about him a little bit and you know, the difference that he made tonight. Yeah, a scheme played a role in, in what his job was tonight. We've seen him play nickelback much of the last two years for Tennessee. The nickelback comes off the field so that Sam linebacker and Daniel Batilla can come on when they go to that 4-3 alignment. Obviously, you're going to go to that, you know, seven guys in the box when you have a team that, that runs the triple option like Georgia Tech. So, Rashawn had to f slip outside to play cornerback opposite Justin Martin, Emmanuel Mosley, uh, and made, made plays throughout the night. I think that they I think they went away from him uh, in some of his past defense. But that, that forced fumble you mentioned, Gabby, was just huge. It was one of those plays where you saw the game running away from Tennessee at that exact moment that the receiver was streaking down the field. Rashawn sees the guy, sees his arm swinging, sees it, sees an alley to the football, boom, gets his hands on it. Uh, and he said, as soon as he saw Mike Abernathy going after it, he said he started running to the bench because he knew it was over because that's what, that's what Mike Abernathy does. He recovers fumbles, recovered three in one game last year against Virginia Tech. So another game-changing play. Uh, Tennessee had to have some of those. Rashawn Golden is a guy that already started to step up early in his career at Tennessee. Maybe we'll see him get an expanded role with the defense as the year moves on.
That was a huge game-changing moment. I know Marcos, Marcos Callaway's first touchdown was another huge moment that I recalled as a, just a game-changer. Thank you all so, so much for watching, and we'll keep you all updated with everything up, leading up to Indiana State this Saturday. For Danny Parker, I'm Gabby Santa.